So usually, because I come from a background of animation drawing, we do a lot of guidelines. We do circles, we do eye lines, all kinds of things that we have to erase later. This year, I'm going to focus more on a different style of drawing, which is based on spacing. How much space is there between things? So first, we're going to draw our little fire lizard friend. And his spacing is on the left side of the paper about halfway. So on my paper, I'm going to draw him somewhere in here. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see him a little better. Focus, there we go. And we're just going to start with his eyeball. So before we draw it, we have to take a look. Is it going straight up and down? Nope, we got a little tilt there. Is it a perfect circle? Nope. The spacing is more of an oval, so that's what I'm going to try to do, is make that same kind of tilted oval. And you can make a lot of lines, you can make it scribbly, that's okay. We're just trying to get the shape to match. Then for his eyeball inside, that's another squished oval, even skinnier than the first one. And the little black part, the pupil. One more in there. And then let's take a look at his head shape. You've got something that looks a little bit like a triangle right on top here, but there's a tiny little bump where his eyebrow is. And that eyebrow is right above his eye. How far is it away? Is it really far away? No, is it really close? Eh, closer than it is far. So I'm gonna put a little bump for his eyebrow. And we're going to make that triangle type shape. Next, we're going to draw his mouth. And I want you to take a look at how far back does his smile go? Whoa, almost to the very back of his head. It goes way around his eye. Keep going, keep going, keep going, almost to the very back and it ends in a little curved line. And his mouth is open a little bit. So we're going to follow that mouth back where we came from. Curve it. And inside his mouth right there, there's a teeny tiny little line to show the difference between his tongue and his mouth. So we're going to put just a little line in there. And then for the rest of his mouth, you can see this line goes around and then down to form his chest. We're going to do that too. We're going to start really close to that mouth line. So close. And we'll get a little farther away. And then what happens to that line? Straight down. And a little bit of a curve. And there's this other line that starts at his cheek at the end of his smile and goes right down underneath his leg there. So we'll do that too. We'll start here. Don't touch any of the other lines. Curve it.
then we'll do the back of his head here. And that looks a little bit pointy too. It's not a perfect curve. It's more like a check mark where we have a short side and a long side. So we already drew that long side. I just need a short line. Then I'll go along his back right here, which has another short line and then a long line. And then we'll go right up into this tail right here where it's like a backwards S. Sure, I can go slower. I'm going to pause right here until you guys catch up. If ever I'm going too fast, you can just type it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and let me know. Drawing is just so fun. Sometimes I forget you guys are trying to copy what I do. Oops, straight hair. As you're drawing, you might run out of paper. It's okay, don't worry about it. We're going to get better at that each and every week. This is our very first one, so if we make some mistakes, that's fine. We can always try again next time. And now we're going to add those little front legs. So right at the end of the chest area, we have that line right there for his front leg. And another one exactly the same for the other front leg. Then we're going to go ahead and add Elsa's thumb. Since it covers up part of his body, we don't want to draw a part and then just erase it later. So we're going to try to put in her thumb next. And I'm going to do that with one little curve that goes from kind of near his tail right down to his legs. And you can see on the back of her thumb, it's much straighter. This part's curvy, but this part's straight. And you can go ahead and add in a little curve for her thumbnail.
So we just drew up to about this part. Now I have to add a little extra. It goes a little bit more downward. And how do you know where to stop? Well, it stops right underneath his smile. So if you look at the smile on yours and go straight down, that'll give you kind of a landmark of where to stop for some line. And you can see that the back of her hand is so close to these lines, almost touching. Almost touching, but not quite. And then we'll just curve it down. Hmm. And anybody just let me know if I'm going too fast again. On the top part of her hand, you can see this big curve. It's much smoother than this one. This one's a little bit like an angle, but this one has a big curve for the rest of her thumb. So we'll curve it around. And then there's one more line here for the inside of her finger. And you can always double check. You look at your reference and you go, oh, do these two lines look closer together than these two lines? I kind of think so. I think maybe I need to make this line come closer. Or maybe your lines are too close. That's when you grab your handy dandy eraser and change it. So then we're going to go to the important part and also the fun part, Elsa's face. What's really important about this picture is that she's looking right at the lizard and the lizard's looking right at her. Or salamander, I forget if he's a salamander or not. If her eyes are looking off this way, it'll look a little strange, like she's not looking at him. And if he's not looking at her, it'll be a little strange. So we got to make sure that these eyes line up. So this is where I am going to use a guideline, just like I drew on here. I'm going to give myself a very light line so that I know Elsa's eyes have to be on this line somewhere that's so that she's looking at her salamander. Right now it looks like he has like heat beam eyes, but we'll change that in a minute. So next, I'm going to draw just this part of Elsa's nose. And I'm looking at which part of this line crosses that line. It's not really in the middle, it's closer to the bottom. So when I draw my line, I want a lot of it on top and just a little bit on the bottom.
If we draw on her nose first, her eye will be easier. And you can see the bottom of her nose, there's a flat line here and then a curved line on the bottom. So let's do a flatter line here. And then we'll curve it a little bit. Next, we're going to draw this partial oval, her actual iris, right on the line that we gave ourselves so we know that they're looking at one another. Just do about half of the oval. And then she's got her black pupil on the inside, so I'll give myself another line. You can color it in if you want to, just remember to leave that little white spot. Then we'll draw her lower lash line right here. We have a little curve in front. This tiny little curve right here. And then we have this bigger curve that goes to the corner. And you can see I landed right on my guideline. And her top eyelashes, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Kind of the same thing. We have the curvy part in front and then we have the longer line in the back. I'm going to add just a little more eyeball here and put the curvy part of the eyelashes in front and then connect it in the back. And she's got some really thick eyelashes on the top. So you can color that in with your pencil. Make sure that you check where is it narrow and where is it thick. Next we have an eyelid, two lines, one super duper short and one curves right along the top. So first I'll do the super duper short one. And I'll curve the other one. And then her eyebrow.
her eyebrow goes farther than her eye does. You can see that there's this space where the eye ends here, but the eyebrow keeps going. It's as long as the lashes or a little bit longer. I'm gonna have to move my nose line here so I can fit my eyebrow in. Goes all the way right out into the corner of the eye there. And we'll go ahead and add her forehead. You can see that it's a flatter curve than her nose. Her nose was really deep. This one's going the other way. And then we'll connect the two. And let's go ahead and finish the rest of her face. For her nose, we have this one little line that separates the top part of the nose from the bottom part of the nose. That's nice and easy. And this line's a little more complicated, but we can break it down. We've got a curve right underneath the line for the nostril. Little curve. And it's straight right there. Straight right there. Straight. Straight. And it's all connected. And we want it to be very close to the outline part of the nose. You can see it's almost touching, almost touching. Then we're going to make this first upper lip right here. So I'm going to do a little curve and a little curve the other way. Look how small it is. It's not really big curves. Just little ones. We can go ahead and draw her mouth, but where is this going to be on our paper? You can see it's right at the same distance as the corner of her eye. So if I look at the corner of her eye and I go straight down, I know that her mouth is going to curve about that far. And for her lower lip, we're going to do a curve to the front and a curve to the back. But very important, as you can see that if I draw a line straight up and down, her bottom lip doesn't touch this line. It's going backwards. So I don't want to draw the other lip over here. I want to draw it farther to the right, push it back a little bit. You can also think of it, you can see her eyeball. If you go straight down from her eyeball, there's her lower lip. If I go straight down from the eyeball, there's my lower lip. And when we draw her lip lines, 
Are her lips the same thickness? Are they exactly the same on top and on bottom? Nope. She's got a smaller upper lip and a little bit thicker lower lip. So when I draw my lines here, this one's going to be thinner, closer to the line. This one's going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit farther from the line. Next, let's go ahead and draw her chin. It's pretty much straight up and down. You can see that the corner of her mouth and her chin are pretty much at the same distance. So that's when I know I'm going to turn and start curving it upward. Let's go ahead and put in some of her hair. She's got this big curling lock that goes right over her eyebrow and touches her eyelid. So I'm going to start at her forehead and do this big curve first, just like a rainbow and touch her eyebrow. Up and around and touch the eyebrow. Then what happens? Curve changes. So it's going to change direction, go the other way, touch her eyelid. Like that. We need to draw the top part of the hair. But here's the problem. If I do it the same distance away and make it the same, it looks a little bit like a worm. And I don't want it to look like a worm, I want it to look like hair. You can see that these lines are far away from each other. These ones are closer to each other. So I need to make these down here close. And then when I get to the top, they're gonna go far away from one another. This is how you can also make beautiful unicorn hair and other kinds of wavy hair. So we got that first one in. Then she has this one that goes up and back. I'll probably run out of paper. But again, they're close together where they're growing out of her head and then farther away as they get to the top. And then we have this hair that flies out in front. But notice it's not like this. We've got kind of a flat curve here and then a tiny curve on the end. 
So let's do that big curve, little curve. Same thing on top, little curve, big curve. Then we've got this one that goes down the side of her face. Look how it almost touches her eyebrow. So close to that eyebrow. And then we're going to go swooping to the back. So let's just do this part first where we go from this curl and then go down to about here. So from my curl, oops, I think my curl is too big. From my curl going down, touch the eyebrow. And we're going to swoop it to the back, wind blowing it to the back. Then we need to draw the other line, but again, it's going to get far away, thick in the middle, close together and thin at the tips, and close together and thin at the beginning here. So I'll start close to my line up here, get farther away from my line in the middle, go back close to my line at the end. And the line that comes right out of the piece of hair we just drew is her neck. You see it comes right from that hair lock. So from there, I'm going to draw a line for the back of her neck. I'm going to draw this line right here and stop. If you run out of paper, that's all right. You just draw right off the paper. And then we'll draw the front part of her neck that curves the other way. After we have this curve of her neck, her body curves the other way. And 
We probably won't have time to do the whole drawing, so let's go ahead and work on her hair since that is a lot of lines and also an important part of the drawing. Let's go to her braid right here. I know it looks like there's a lot of lines, but let's take a look closer and see what we're actually drawing. For right now, ignore these lines in the middle, these skinny lines. Don't look at those. Let's just look at the big shape and that big shape. So we've got curving lines that end in a little point, curve into a point, curve into a point. We can do that. Let's get our drawing on here. Let me show them side by side. Look how it almost touches her chin, so close. There's that top curve, and then we need another one right below it. Then what happens, the direction changes. We have a curve going the other way. You can almost see a little letter S right in there. And where does it touch? It touches down to her body. So I have to make this S come all the way down, touch the body. Then I'm going to do it again. There's this curve right here, curve on the top. And we're going to do another curve, big. Oops, I drew that line too far away. Let me try it again. You can see over here how close these lines are together, so I got to keep them close. Then here we go again, another bump. I'm going to keep it close. And another big S. I'm going to go ahead and draw a little bit more of her arm so I know where to stop the braid. But I'll keep doing this over and over, a little bump. Big S. And then we just come in and do a curve on the underside too. You can see it twisting almost like a unicorn horn upside down. And you might be able to see it on your drawing, you might not, but she has a little ribbon or a little rubber band to keep her hair in a braid. So I'm going to add some curved lines. Little letter U's right to the bottom there. And for me, her arm, which is right here, would be in the way, so I'd have to draw her loose hair tail right there on the other side of her arm. I don't have very much room though, so I don't think I'm going to draw very much down there. So 
So now that I have these big twisty shapes, I can come back and I can add just two little lines to each one. Like that. And like that. And you can see the lines on the other side. For just the ones on the top, they have lines going in the other direction. Just like a feather. But if that doesn't make sense or you don't like it, just don't draw it. It's your drawing, so make it how you want it. Next, I'm going to draw these two lines that show the collar of her dress that go from the back of her neck down, 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 all the way until they reach her arm. So starting just a little bit away, a little bit from the uh, hair there. Let's start on her high collar, coming all the way down. Then I have to do it again. But up here, they're a little bit farther apart. It looks wider. And here, it's very narrow. They're very close together. So up here, I might have my lines far apart. But down here, I'm going to have them very close together. I'm going to try to make them connect. Like that. And I know that's kind of hard because they're really big lines. So I'm going to pause right there, give you a chance to work on her dress. And let's take a look at these big pieces of hair that go to the back. I'm going to look at the biggest ones first, and then it'll be easier to add these little ones later. So this first big one comes down this way and up. Again, we're going to have our lines closer together to make that point, and then they'll get wider as they go back to the head. Oops, I'm going to run out of paper. I'm just going to stick another one underneath. Like those toothpaste commercials. <laughs> Reminds me of Colgate and that little swoosh. So 
And we have another big one that sticks out from behind that one. And from this piece that we just drew, this one right here in the back, this is where the rest of her hair comes down, down, way below her neck, almost at her shoulder. So from my hair back here, I'm gonna add this little point first, just like the tooth, like a dragon tooth hanging down right there. And after that, I've got two big curves. Then we're going to ignore that little piece right there for now, and we're going to draw this big shape of hair that goes right along the top. You can see this one kind of goes this way, and it goes that way, and then that way, basically three angle changes. So I've got my first part right there, kind of going right above her eye. Then the next part starts going downhill a little bit, downhill a little bit. If you ran out of paper, that's fine. And then the last part connects right to that saber tooth, little dragon tooth piece that we made. She's got a lot of hair. I didn't realize how much hair she had. Then we can add the little flyaway pieces like this one on the top. It's easy now to just stick it on top. Just like a little shark fin. There's another piece that comes and almost touches the back of her head. We can add a little spike to this one. This one also has a double spike way in the back here. We only drew one, so now we just add one more skinny one. Yes? I see a hand up. Too fast. Oh, thank you for telling me. I will stop right here. In fact, we only have four minutes left, so I'm going to go ahead and stop right there, and I'm going to leave my drawing. Leave this drawing in case you want to add some other details, and then I will let you know when time is up, and we'll take a look at the drawings you did today. I will make sure that next class I will go much slower. I didn't finish the lizard. Oh, we didn't finish the lizard. Let's go and do that then. Or maybe I can put my paper here so I can draw. Well, this would be a good time to practice. That other line of the tail is going to follow exactly. Bump right into her finger.
And for the back legs, we'll just do the same as the front legs. We'll just add two little lines. And there's the back leg. If you want to finish her fingers, just extending this line a little more and adding a curve at the tip. And a little fingernail. And that is just about time is up. So this was the first frozen class. I'm sorry I went too fast. And next time I will make sure to pick an easier drawing and one that we can finish in the time that we have. But I'm sure you all had a good time and drew something awesome to show. So let's go ahead and get rid of my spotlight video. How do I do that? Oh, there it is. Remove spotlight. And when you're ready, just hold it up to your camera and I will spotlight you for everyone. Nobody's ready? Oh, name is ready. That's uh, spotlight. Lovely! I like that eyelash right there. That came out very nice. And you finished your little lizard. Excellent. Oh, yeah, I love the lizard. Really yeah, the lizard was fun, huh? And we've got Fusi. Let's see. Whoa, oh, so pretty. So pretty. I like that big face. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? We've got Kristen. Let's put Kristen on for everybody. Oh, looks like you're getting into some colors there and some inking. Are you finished? No, not finished, but I started on some inking. You started on some inking. Cool, cool. Love that little Me? lizard. I put it too. <laughs> <laughs> and then is Calista ready? Let's put. Calista up. Ooh, oh. I did. Look at that beautiful hair. And my mom. And there's your mom. Oh, excellent. Oh, wow, you guys did some stuff on your own too. Great. And how about Hania? Let's see. Hania. Right. Oh. Ooh, I like those lips. Lovely. And I like how you guys are changing the shape of the hair, making it go thick and thin again. Beautiful. Anybody else? Be seen. Frank. Frank. Let's see Frank. Good place. Spotlight. Oh, Frank. Ooh, beautiful. Kind of blue, but yeah, there we go. Looks like straight out of a coloring book. Look at the great the braid. Great braid. Yeah, that braid is really nice. And who else? Michaela? Do you have anything to show? No, sorry. Nope. That's fine. And I think we lost, was it Azalea? I remember her name with a Z. That's Saley. Oh, yeah, Saley. Okay. Or Saley. Saley or Zaley? Yeah, I think she left. Saley. Saley. Okay. But she left. So maybe we'll see her again next week but anyway thank you guys for drawing with me next time we'll be drawing anna so that should be fun i will see you next friday